all the way down to our seat. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Chris, and we are checking out two bikes today. We're going to compare two very, very popular bikes for us. And one is the Trek Roscoe 9. The other is the Trek Excalibur line. First off, these two bikes are quite different in price, but are both 9 level bikes. This means they are technically Trek's currently highest level aluminums available in these bikes. That is normally how Trek does it, and then from there you'll go to the points to go the carbon. Neither of these options come in a carbon model. So as of right now, the Roscoe 9 and the Excalibur 9 are the highest levels you can get. Both of them we're looking at today are the 2022 part specs, and that is something which everyone is waiting for. Lots of things shipping, and some of these are coming sooner than others. Both models only come in one option, which is somewhat what Trek is doing on some of their higher-end, mid-level bikes. They seemingly do one kind of cool special color, and that's it. And then you go into carbon level if it's available, and you'll get a few more choices or go into that Project One push. The Excalibur 9 is available in a blue, and the Roscoe is available in that really cool, like, olive green to sand-colored fade with black speckling. So they've really done a good job on that one. I like it a lot. As a overall bike, they're both a trail bike. The Excalibur is definitely leaned a little bit more towards the racer and cross country, whereas the Roscoe line is generally a little bit more party laps you know having fun throwing it around it's going to be able to go up and down a chairlift but also still be pretty fast on that flat stuff it's just got a lot more suspension in in between so both bikes here are on alpha gold aluminum so that is the highest level of aluminum that trek offers meaning it's going to be a really nice lightweight frame and the really good quality both of them are a tapered head tube so that is something you get on this level of bike and above it's only in the trek marlin series or lower that you'd go to a straight tube which means there's not much room for upgrade both of these bikes have internal cable routing and that is for the rear derailers and the dropper post as well they are boost 141 on the excalibur and boost 148 on the uh roscoe the Excalibur, though, strangely enough, still has a 5 mil QR on it as well. So, I mean, you're going to lose a little bit of power through the corners. It's not much. You know, it's a really fancy feature, which does add a benefit to it. But let's not get overwhelmed. It's nothing crazy different. You can feel it, but it's not a massive change in my mind. The fork is where it really changes up here. So this is where a lot of the cost is going to be changed. The Excalibur comes with a Recon Gold RL, and that's from RockShox. So this is an air spring. It will work really well. It has 100 mils of travel, and it, it works. It's nothing crazy, um, but it's not entry level by any means necessary. It's going to be a nice lightweight one, which is key, and short travel, meaning it's going to keep that weight down again and still be very efficient through the small, chattery stuff. When you look at the Roscoe 9, you are going to a Fox Rhythm 36. This is a pretty massive fork. This goes to up to 140 mils of travel, and overall, it's just way beefy. Obviously, way thicker stanchions, way more travel. It comes with that bigger everything really designed to take bigger hits overpower things it's really going to work superbly well but it will weigh a little more and overall it will be a little less efficient on the smaller stuff but i don't know if it really will like it's a much better fork it's really going to make a huge difference um just overall riding with this one you could upgrade the Ros the excalibur to the roscoe level but I don't think it would reach um, all the way up to 140 mil. You'd have to be limited to like a 120 mil fork. Um, whereas the Roscoe, you could change again. Not really worth it with such a high end fork. But that one's max compatible fork is 150 mil. Both of them have a pretty similar wheel set on them, which is very interesting to be honest. I would have thought the Roscoe would have been pumped out with something a little more heavy duty over the top but relatively they're all the same except the rim and that goes to a line comp 30 on the 
Roscoe and just a Covey on the Excalibur. Really, all that allows is a different tire size. It's going to go to a wider tire size, and you're going to be able to fit a little beefier in there. It's going to be able to be a little more supple through it. It's not huge again, but these little things all do add up to become a beefier overall bike along with that fork change. I think the biggest tire size you can fit on the Excalibur is a 2.4, but with the 29s on the Roscoe, you can fit a 2.6. So 2.4 is still a pretty big tire. It used to be massive five, six years ago, and now 2.6 is just almost plus size, which plus size doesn't exist too much anymore. The overall dropper post in them is the same thing, so they're going to be just the same, perform the same. They get the exact same travel up until the medium and bigger. So the Excalibur comes with a dropper post, which is pretty rare for an Excalibur, but the max size you can get is a 130 mil. In the Roscoe, you are getting a 150 mil in a medium, large, and higher. So that's something to note. It is, again, designed to go over bigger stuff. That's exactly what the Roscoe's for, and that's exactly how they've designed it. I don't know if you'd be able to fit much bigger. You'd have to really do the measurements and see the internal space and obviously how high you sit on your seat, how much seat post is out to see if you could fit bigger, bigger on the Excalibur. But it's worth noting that there is a little change there. The overall handlebar is pretty similar. The... Excalibur comes with just a standard alloy Bontrager one. The Rusco comes with the Bontrager line, so it is a little lighter weight. Biggest difference is it goes up to the 780 mil wide on the medium and bigger, whereas the Excalibur just comes with a 750 mil. So, eh, again, many people cut down from 780. I like it that wide, but many people cut down. So 750 is not a, a narrow bar by any means. Grips are pretty much the exact same. Stems are slightly different degrees and such, but it's not anything crazy different. It'll just tweak the position. The brakes are pretty significant. With the Roscoe, you get the M6120, and that is a really powerful four-piston hydraulic brake. With the Excalibur, you still get a really good brake, like the MT-410 is not a bad setup, but it definitely could be better. The Roscoe, again, just has better. This is where we come to the shifting unit, though. There's a lot of similarities here, and that makes sense. They're both very high-end, both 12-speed, both have the shifter of the SLX and a ready railer of the XT, both have the long cage on it with a 51 max tooth. And this is going to allow you to pretty much put any cassette on there, which is really, really nice. And um, which Shimano offers anyway. The cranks, pretty similar. You do get the E13, but I wouldn't say it's a better crank than what you'd get in a Shimano model. Honestly, cranks don't really change much. You will cut a teeny bit of weight potentially. The shifting on them is going to be identical. The max chainring size, which is interesting, I found on the Roscoe is a 34, but on the Excalibur is only 32. Now, normally I'd want the Excalibur to potentially have a faster speed, but it's interesting that the, the design of the frame just allows a little bit bigger. Not going to change much. Not many people put a 34 tooth on, especially on a downhill style bike like the Roscoe, but the options are there. Both of them come tubeless, and they weigh in at 27.6 pounds for the Excalibur and 28.95 for the Roscoe. So a little bit heavier, but not crazy. Obviously, the biggest thing is going to be tires and that front fork. The rest of the bike is pretty similar. Overall, which one should you choose is really just based on where you're riding. These are quite drastically different bikes. Yeah, there's about a $1,000 price change in between them as well. But the geometry is so far different between them. The Roscoe is so much more designed for downhill, rough country, jumping around. And the Excalibur is really designed for wheels on the ground. So I don't think if you're watching this and you're undecided about both, you really need to look at where you ride and or exactly how you ride. If you're the one who wants to go the fastest downhill, hit every rock on the trail, go Roscoe. If you want to be the fastest overall rider, 
go for the Excalibur. That being said, if you have a lot of rough downhill stuff, go for the Roscoe. It's going to take a bigger beating. It's going to take a way better time. Interestingly enough, with the Excalibur 9, you could easily purchase um, a RockShox 36 or a Fox 36 for a pretty good price used and be able to get it very similar spec to the overall Roscoe lineup if you wanted a little higher end fork or even go with like the SID setup if you want it to be a bit more racy. So the pricing is weird, the naming is weird, the bikes are completely different so I would highly recommend you check out something a little different if you were comparing these two I don't think you should be. Narrow it down as to what you're going to be riding and how you're going to be riding and the answer will be very very clear. I made this video because a lot of people ask about the Excalibur series and the Roscoe series. And although the Excalibur is beefier than it used to be, it's a pretty capable trail bike now. The Roscoe is still going to be a trail machine and really eat up that rougher down country style of riding. Alright guys, hopefully this helps you out a little bit. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and good luck.